So someone wanted a video on how to position text onto an alert object they had created. So what I mean by that, uh, they had created, let's say you're handy with Photoshop and you've created your own custom alert background, whether it's animated or ma animated in Adobe After Effects or you know, just a PNG that you exported from Photoshop or whatever. So you've got that finished product, but you want to know how to overlay the text and position it properly on top of that backdrop. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna show you how to do that with stream elements. And we're also gonna cover some of the basics of just creating an overlay from scratch. So first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna log into your stream elements dashboard and then you're gonna to click to my overlays on the left here. We're gonna create a blank overlay for this one. Most cases 1080p, that'd be fine. 1080p, you generally want to do one overlay per scene is the way I do it. Because sure, you can create all these tiny little overlay objects, but then you're gonna end up with several different browser sources. And whenever you get all these different browser sources in OBS stacked up, that's increasing your CPU load there. So the more you can condense and position into one big browser source, the lighter load on your PC. So there's trade-offs with that because that means you have to log into stream elements whenever you want to position something and move something around. But I promise you it's worth it because of the light and load. So we're gonna do a 1080p with this one. So we're talking about alerts in this case. So we're gonna go down here, click this plus sign. They have updated their interface. So this is this is gonna be new to several people, even if you've used stream elements in the past. Plus sign, alerts, alert box. Here we go here. Um, right now, this is your default. You can resize that if you need to. We're not gonna worry about that. You can, you can kind of center it on your palette. Let's say we want it in the center. All right, you're gonna have to configure each one of these. So we'll start with follow alerts. We're not gonna go through all of them. Um, click your sprocket. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work, it takes a lot of time because you have to go by every single one of these things and it can take a lot of time and a lot of work. All right, so at any point in time, you can emulate an alert to test it out. So there we go, we've got that alert. May is now following. it'll make up a name, populate it and show you what it'll look like. It has this default, everything set up. So let's say, so we've been working in Photoshop. We want to use our own custom image we made. I'm just going to throw something random up here. If you go to upload it, you'll just click upload. You can drag and drop or you can just select and it'll bring up a dialogue. Um, I'm just going to grab, I'm just going to grab a random one. We'll do that one. I don't even know how big that is. This may look terrible, but it'll get the point across. The next thing you're going to worry about is your sound. So right here is where you're going to upload and adjust the volume sound, whatever. Upload sound. It works the same way as the images. Otherwise, um, it has a default sound file you can use. Next step, and this is an important one. So these three items right here on the left, this will be your image you uploaded with the text underneath. I'm going to go ahead and click save. We're going to go ahead and name this main scene. I'll just name it that. I, I'm really paranoid and I save often whenever I'm working on something. So you'll see me do that quite a bit. Let's emulate that for that. Just to get an idea of what that looks like. Test often. There you go. So let's say you've made something though that's a little more elaborate and you really want the text to be positioned, I mean, in a particular spot over the top of that. So what you can do, you have this option to change it to row. Go ahead and show you this real quick. You have to save after each change or it's not gonna show you. So do remember that. But what we want is this one right here, the first one, and that's text over your image. So let's save and then emulate follower event. Right now the text is just like, where the heck is my text? And you can run into some quirks like this because the text just literally is not here. And it's usually some kind of sizing or positioning issue that's going on. So we're gonna go ahead and play with that. I'm glad that happened during the stream because you'll, you'll run into quirks like that with streaming. That's just kind of how it is. We know how that is. So 
let's skip down here to this section here text settings go ahead and click that up arrow this is where you can set your font this is where you can set your your um color default color you want for the font whatever um this is very important so depending on your image in most cases you're going to make want to make sure this is centered is set to the center text alignment because later on what we're going to do is once we start putting in these variables and playing with these positions to get the text um, populated where you want it's going to do that based off of the margins so you're going to want to make sure you have this set properly and in most cases you're going to center it save because i'm paranoid that pulsing text whenever for example the username that's populated this is where you'll set the color for it you can set you know which animations you want to use for that we're just going to leave the defaults for now here's a big one right here advanced so let, let's go ahead and set this it's defaulted as a neg 50 i don't know if it always defaults to that or not it was in this case we're gonna set that to zero save populate follow event okay now see when we did that our text showed up it was currently set to neg 50 on top for some reason i don't know why that was but apparently that had thrown that completely out of this frame so that's a good starting point and you can play with this so you can adjust this and i don't know you can barely see it really faint your text right here so let's say you want it you have a little box or something on your image that you want to get this lined up into let's say 190 for there save you can emulate follow event boom so that shows you how to get it aligned how to get it over it how to get it aligned um, let's say we had like a, a box right here for example that's how you do it and that's all there is to that now you'll have to do that for each one of your different types of alerts so it is a lot of work initially but it's well worth it and you shouldn't have to touch it much after that now some other things you may you may run into as you're playing around um let's say you've made custom alert backgrounds in photoshop or whatever for example and they already have the word new follower or something already on that well you don't really want the redundancy of you know the username and it's saying new follower or whatever on here so we're done with this section we can collapse it right here we can go back here here's your alert message you can change that to whatever you're generally always going to want to leave the, the name variable which is most important so let's say for example you have um follower or whatever title on there already so you don't need to say this we're going to back that out and just leave the variable itself in there save remember and this gets me all the time remember to save often because i'll sit here i'll get really involved and i'll make all these changes and then i'll run emulations and tests and like why why aren't my changes sticking and i forget oh yeah i didn't click save so let's emulate follow our event boom so now it's in the center that's really all there is to that um there's a lot of other things you can do as far as going in here let's text settings we'll go back here you can play with your font sizes so keep in keep in mind the different username links so whenever you're running these emulations and testing it randomly generates different names but remember there there's some freakishly long names that some some twitch users have so you may want to account for that let's say we want to to shrink the font size down a little bit um there's other adjustments you can make you can do word space you can do letter spacing is a good one like if you want the font you want to start you know spread them out more or bring them closer together i don't generally mess with that you can add a text stroke you can play with any of that go ahead and save emulate follower perfect so you generally want to leave some kind of leeway now see remember we set this centered so you're going to want this text to be in the center of your box and just remember to do that get that centered perfectly whenever you're um playing in an advanced session here 
I just account for that. So when you're done with that, you save, we're done with the follower alert. Next is all these other alerts that you wanna use. So you just go through, you'll do those same steps for each one of these alerts. Now, the big one that I always dread is a subscriber alert. Because remember, with this particular alert and the, and the cheer alerts, if you wanna do um, different variations, you're gonna to have to also, after you get done with all that, you're gonna to have to go in here. And look here, you have variations. This means you get to do this all over again for each one of these variations. But it's one of those things, I think it is a lot of extra work, but I think it's worthwhile doing it because especially subscribers, people that are supporting you financially, I mean, every little thing counts. Anything I can do to, you know, you know, give them a little extra credit and show of appreciation, like, hey, this person has been subscribed for, you know, 10 months or whatever. I, I really think it needs to be able to say that. So this is gonna look very much the same whenever you get in here and configure each one of these. Just things are gonna be slightly different. So the set images here, you'll do that. It's kind of moved around. That's where you do it. Um, you've got the sound right here. Here's, here's your text over image. Whether you wanna show subscriber messages or not. Here's your variables with your message. You may want to shorten that. You may already have whatever, you know, thing you've created to upload as a backdrop for your alert. You may want to edit that accordingly. Um, I'm showing you this because some of these things change. Their positioning is a little weird. Enter animations, which is something we didn't cover earlier. Enter animations, you can select those. If you want to enter and exit animations, you probably do. Duration, I recommend, you know, stretching that out a second or two and then we'll go into more detail with the animations when you do that. Text animations are generally fine, just leaving those as, um, I'll usually switch those to fade in or fade out with the, with the other animation. If you need a delay for some reason, you can, you can add a delay like, hey, I want this to show up and then I want the text to appear like two seconds later or something. If for some reason you want to do that, here is where you would do that. So for your alignment, it's down here that we messed with earlier. I see it didn't, it didn't remember anything. You're going to have to do this <laughs> individually. So we can, we can again set that to zero or if your boxes, your, your, whatever you're using is basically follows the same thing with most cases it really will. And you just, change another word to subscriber on that on um, your artwork that you made or whatever um, you can take the numbers that you used from the follower that we just configured and you can just paste that into here and then so it does make it a little bit easier once you've done one because then you'll have the numbers and you'll you'll have something you know what you can copy and paste and just put it in the same areas so I figured I would cover this variation section too because it has the same things but they're slightly different places, which can be kind of weird. Again, remember to save often. Whenever you're done with all of this, remember, play with your animation settings. That's another one I forget. Like we just looked at, you can get your different bounce ins. Let's say we do a let's say we do a bounce in and bounce out. You generally want to add a couple seconds, like I was talking about. We'll go ahead and do that. Do a text fade in, text fade out, just so it's a little neater. Save, emulate, follower. I see it just kind of did a bounce in animation. And I know this looks like trash because I just threw a random image on here and on, but you get the general picture. Play with it, it's gonna take a lot of time. You're gonna need to be patient, but I promise you it'll be worth it. After you get one down, you'll get kind of the hang of it. Whenever you're done, save often, click that, and then we're done. Um, I'm assuming you're comfortable with adding browser sources to OBS Studio. I don't want to get too crazy. This video is already going pretty long, but right here is where you'll copy your overlay URL, copy to clipboard. It does that for you. You go into OBS Studio, you'll add a source. It will be a browser source. You'll paste that link that just went in your clipboard and um, you will set it to 1920 
by 1080 in the measurements and save and you're done and generally that will default to the top you want to make sure it's in the right order generally you want your alerts to be over everything else you don't want your game screen or anything else to cover up your alerts i also recommend play with this volume different sound files as you play with different sound files you'll find out they they have different default volumes depending on what files you're using so what i'll generally do so i don't blow my viewers eardrums out is i'll launch obs studio when i'm playing with this and you don't even have to have this browser source in obs studio yet it'll monitor the source and just watch that bar you know your little your little volume meter where it's green yellow and then red and just just run some emulations and then watch in obs and see if it peaks see if it gets too far into red and yellow if it's going to be too loud you can adjust that default volume here for each one of these alerts so that's one thing you want to look at all right i'm going to end this video here i hope it was helpful remember you can always catch me in discord or on the twitch stream whenever i'm live or in the comments below if you have any other questions or suggestions or one of the videos i'm always happy to help